why is this record so special to you all? I mean, several reasons. Um, the first being this is our first music we've released since um, Kyle, our former bandmate, passed away. Right. And there was just so many things that we wanted to write about and so many things that we really, really wrote from the heart that were straight up hard to sing in the studio. The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by 291 Colorado Whiskey, by Michter's, and by Heaven Hill Brands. And joining the Fred Minnick Show, uh, Dave Stevens from We Came as Romans. How you doing, Dave? Doing all right? Dude, I'm great. How are you? Man, I'm so excited to have you on the show and sip some whiskey with you. And a, a, a little uh, teaser to folks. Your wife's going to come and put a blindfold on you. Uh, <laughs> we're going to see how that goes. Now, do you wear a lot of blindfolds, Dave? Uh, not not too often. <laughs> she she uh, she loves sleeping with one. So I guess she's more likely to wear one. <laughs> okay. I always make fun of her for it. But now it's my turn, I guess. You know, when you're on a plane, right? It's the uh, you got to sometimes you got to wear it to keep the all the weird light coming at you. Yes. Uh, Absolutely. Especially, you know, the guy across the aisle that will not shut the window no matter what time of day it is. <laughs> and, and, you know, I will say that was one of the things that I liked where, about wearing a mask on a plane is like I always ended up by the guy that would fart a lot or someone near me in the area <laughs> would fart a lot or they just stink. And like I got this mask on and my nose is very sensitive and it would it would take away a lot of that smell. So. You know, yes. the mask in the the mask on the on the eyes and the mouth. I mean, that was like that was like heaven for me for like long travel. But I was wearing the mask one day in the grocery store and someone definitely farted in my general vicinity and I could smell it clear as day. And I was like, so this thing's going to protect me from covid, but I can smell the fart. <laughs> but <laughs> and that's it was and just like funny. And if it gets I'm sure in it there, does, but it was just a funny thought. I was like, I can smell this guy's fart, but maybe he won't give me COVID. I don't know. And, <laughs> and if it gets in there, you know, the fart stink. I mean, that ain't going away. Like, that's no, like, it's like stuck. And so it's, it's, it's like, it's like a Dutch oven on your face. Yeah. I mean, that's, ooh, man, brutal. What a, what a way to start the show, right? Yes. I mean, talking yes. about farts, we're both, we're in fifth grade again. But I'm you know, sure you, with your palate too, you could like you probably could have been able to tell what he had for dinner the night before. <laughs> you know, like mm, oh yes, well, uh, <laughs> what a way you know, to start. Th you yeah. know, I, I I will say that 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 is when I realized as a kid that I had a good nose was that I could smell the farmers like um you know a couple miles away. I could smell their cattle. Where I could smell the wow. sludge they were putting down on their fields and stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, but uh, th that was usually you, you smell the stink before you smell the good. That <laughs> that's part of it. But uh, yeah, it's the trade off, right? Now you you travel with your bandmates. I'm yes. curious. Does is any of them? Does one of them like smell like more so than the other? Do, I mean, do they? Is there a stink going on there? And the we came as Ro Romans bus. You know, there was a long time where there was, um, I can't say currently that it's that bad for this person anymore, but yes, our bass player for a very long time had a, had a very real struggle with personal hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if it was so much, it was a struggle more. So he just didn't care enough. He was too much of a fan of the whiskey and just <laughs> wouldn't really care. And he'd keep going about his day regardless. And now he's like, it's like his number one thing that he's prideful of is how he smells good. And he, he showers every day. And we're like, that's, that's great, man. That's normal adult things, but we're proud of you. Good job. <laughs> I mean, it, it's stepping up. I mean, if you don't, if you're showering every day, I mean, good for you. Um, actually, studies do show that it's not so good to shower every day now. I've don't seen that. Him. Yeah, don't tell I've him seen that. that. Okay, I won't. I don't want him to go back to him uh six seven years ago he's doing great right now <laughs> yeah i mean if he had the stink six seven years ago and he brought it back you know that could throw you off but, yes uh, it would completely but no he's he's hilarious he 
just had this light bulb moment and he's all of a sudden he's got everything very neat organized you own his house and i wonder i'm like is this my bandmate andy or is this a serial killer living here <laughs> so everything's you know color coordinated and order perfect looks like his house hasn't been lived in but uh yeah people change <laughs> well that you know and it's funny like you mentioned you know andy because the bass in y'all's music i've always i've always loved i always feel like the bass players always like underappreciated in, yeah uh, for sure in, in music um and especially in like especially in metal and hard rock bass is so important and oh, yeah. you know they don't get they don't get the same kind of love as as you lead singers you know or the guitarists you know no man it, it they don't and um you know everyone has their own battles and stuff to um with practicing and prepping for tours and even being on tour um and Andy, Andy's one of the most impressive people in my band. He, he, uh, the way he came up through it and stuff, he, we added him simply because we had nobody else. <laughs> um, our old bass player was going to college and the one before that quit, and he was kind of the only guy we had and he couldn't really play bass that well. And he couldn't really rock out on time, but he was like a super hard worker and he was super motivated. And within a few years, he was killing it. He learned how to rock out on time and he got really good at his instrument and ran with his graphic design that he does for the band and really became such a huge part of the band because of his work ethic, you know, and it comes through in our songs, how much he's grown as a bass player and how he's solid as a rock now at his instrument. <clears throat> yeah. It's interesting. You talk about you know the, the timing of it too, a little bit like, you know, you're, you all can go, you all can go from like, you know, punkish, you can go to, to hard rock. I mean, if you wanted to do ballads, you could probably get away with that and grow your hair out and be a very 1980s hair hair band. We did probably. try a ballad. It didn't go so well. But yes, I appreciate that. Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's just timing, you know, yeah. like like who wants no, no one really wants ballads today. Like there, you know, there's such a collection from 20, 30 years ago from when you were born that I was like, yeah, you can't, you, you can't beat, uh, um, uh, Def Leppard or, or, or I guess Def Leppard's not really a ballad, you know, band, but I know what you yeah, mean though. Yeah. Yeah. Quiet riot or whoever, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a ballad guy. That was so. the era for ballads, man. They're every band was pumping them out. <laughs> yeah. It, it, you know, now instead of the, uh, in, instead of the, uh, the lighter, we got the phone. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah. But anyway, we, you all have such range in like, it seems like you're kind of going, going more into the, to the heavier side of, of what you all can, can do, um, in the last couple of years. And, um, I, I was really a big fan of uh, Black Hole that dropped uh, last year. That was probably my favorite. Thank you. That was my favorite song um, that you all had put out um, uh, in, in the past year. I know you've been doing a lot of singles, and but like I, I was just curious, like you know, from a singer's perspective, like what is more, what is more challenging to go into that that harder side, or to be a little little softer and you know kind of you know play it up a little bit more on the on, on the punk punk side yeah um for me personally the most challenging thing is singing in those low registers and still pushing emotion through when you're trying to sing softly it's mm -hmm. easy to sound pissed when you're screaming your head off or when you're singing those high yelly notes you can sound very emotional without even trying but on this new record that was my biggest struggle was trying to sing in these lower registers and still put emotion behind them and the first like week or two i was really struggling with it and i wound up doing a whole bunch of vocal lessons during those two weeks figuring out how to use my lips more as a megaphone and moving my jaw in a different way and um like micromanaging, like what my tongue is doing yeah, and making those things sell the emotion instead of the volume of my voice. And I came back from that lesson and 
well, the two lessons I did, and we started tracking another low part for another song. And our producer, Drew Falk, he was like, well, I got good news and bad news. I'm like, what? He's like, good news is you nailed it. Bad news is we're going to redo all the other low stuff you've already done. <laughs> like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Sounds good. Glad, uh, glad I made some progress. And um, yeah, I wound up really dialing in that part of my tone. So that's always a struggle for me because when the band first started and for years, I've always been the the yelly guy, the, the screamer, the, the guy that's coming in on the high notes, yelling them. And I've had to learn how to take on that lower register of my voice more. I guess for everyone, it's different. But um, yeah, that was a big step I took. <laughs> and I, mean, I can't wait for people to hear the rest of the songs on the record. I've There's a few um, that my voice is all over the place that I'm really excited about. Yeah. It, it's interesting. Like you all have been dropping singles after singles and, and, and like, what, what is the, what is the like strategy to doing like singles, like trickling them out like that versus dropping the, the record all at once, because you have a, you have an enormous fan base and I would imagine yeah. that they would be like streaming the entire record over and over and over again. You know, I know. Um, honestly, the release, I mean, to be completely transparent, the release wasn't supposed to take as long as it has been. Uh, um, the record was supposed to already be out, but um, supply chain issues, you know, we, we, we weren't able to get our hands on vinyl and several other things that would have made the release the success we wanted it to be. And it's been so many years since our last release. And this record means so much to us that we didn't want anything to potentially inhibit it being perfect. Mm -hmm. So we were like in the grand scheme of this cold, like war dropped in 2017, I think. Yeah. It's been a long time. You know, what's a few more months to release the record exactly how we want it. And um, that's what the team agreed on. And it started off as, all right, well, it'll be two months later. All right. Three months later. All right, guys, if we want it to be perfect, it'll for sure be four months. And we were like, all right, <laughs> So it's kind of a bummer. Um, and it wound up actually being even longer than that. But uh, whatever. It, in the grand scheme of it all, those extra few months won't make a difference. What'll make a difference is it being dropped exactly how we want it to be dropped and, um, you know, being perfect. So, well, you know, the, the time, I, I would say this like, you know, you all are going to be going out on tour very soon. Yes. Uh, I mean, it didn't matter when you would have dropped it, you would have. Um, you would have done well with it because your audience wants to see that and you would go out on tour. But, but like, we've been, we've been balled up for the last two years. And I think, I think right now we're getting in that wave of people. The last set of people are comfortable with going out like after COVID. Yeah. 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 I, I think for the first time we have a, we have a full range of an audience, but I wanted to ask you something you said there was like, you know, this is really special to the band. Like, why is this, why is this record so special to you all? I mean, several reasons. Um, the first being, this is our first music we've released since um, Kyle, our former bandmate passed away. Right. And there was just so many things that we wanted to write about. And so many things that we really, really wrote from the heart that were, straight up hard to sing in the studio. Um, and I, I want people to hear it all, you know, I'm really excited for people to hear our side of our grieving and working through things that the way that we have. And I'm excited to hear how people, I don't know, um, take it. Um, and I'm also excited for people to hear our music has evolved and the way that we've all changed in the last several years. And, and I, I say this too, um, I think my favorite thing to come out of COVID is this record because wow. they always say you have your, your whole life to write your first record and then you have about three months to write your second <laughs> and so on following every record. This has been the longest amount of time we've had to write a record and we started writing a record right before Kyle passed and then that obviously got put on the back burner. And then we were going to write a record before COVID and then COVID happened and totally delayed everything. And it wound up 
getting to the point where our team was like, well, we don't know when this COVID thing's going to end. So just make the record exactly how we want it, rewrite it however many times you want it, write as many songs as you want. And that's exactly what we did. We wrote a ton of songs and rewrote a ton of songs and had so many drafts of each song and wound up really getting to actually take our time making a record, which was amazing. So I think that all shines through, you know, the emotion, the time we had and um, just being in a place where we knew we had to release a great record to like honor Kyle. So I think it all yeah. comes through and I'm really excited for people to hear it. Did, did Kyle get to, you had said that you all were, were doing a little writing and working on a um, prior to his passing. Did, did he get to contribute to any of these songs? Um, I won't say that he did cause they all changed like so much. And I, I don't even fully remember what we were working on with him. I do know that some of the electronics and stuff that he was messing with, we were able to get our hands on and our producer was able to use some of the stuff that he was inspired by in our new mm -hmm. stuff. And that's one of the main reasons we went with our producer again, cause he did cold like war. And him and Kyle were like boys through that whole thing. And he loved the way that Kyle worked with the electronics and drew just like took it and ran with it in the last few years. And so we wanted to go back to Drew because we were like, Drew gets what Kyle was going for through and through. And we want that to shine through. And we felt like Drew was the only guy that could really capture that, that Kyle was doing in our previous records and pull it in to this record. Well, I think I think it's a beautiful thing. It sounds it sounds like you all are dedicating everything that you've been doing to Kyle. You want to make this as perfect as possible uh, in, in his legacy and memory. And, you know, sometimes, you know, the best things take a little time and it's been five years since your yeah. last record, you know. Yeah, super long time. But you're still together. You know, we came as Romans still here. You know, you're brought up on adult swim randomly out of nowhere, you know, <laughs> and you're you're still ingrained in uh, in the pop culture of uh, of life. So, I mean, I, I think I think that's a it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing. And you all should all be very proud uh, for, Thank for you, this man. moment. Yeah, for sure, man. Thank you. I really appreciate it. There's there's been a few very dark moments in the last few years where I just wondered if we were going to be able to keep going or if anybody still cared or if the whole thing was just fizzling away and and dropping new songs and going back out on the road, um, especially on our De Plant a Seed tour that we did right after COVID was kind of getting, the COVID restrictions were getting lifted. Mm -hmm. Combination of all those things, I was like, man, I think we can actually hang around. I think people still care. I think we can still keep doing this. And and then releasing these new singles. Yeah. People definitely care and people are stoked and it feels good to be doing it still. I mean, I started the band in high school and I was in 2005 <laughs> and uh, to still be trucking along and um, playing shows and having people show up and care is yeah, dude, it's, it's, it is, it's, it is an incredible thing. Yeah. And maybe, you know, you know, with, with all the Roman, Roman stuff and, and pop culture today with all the shows that are coming out. Maybe, Hey, maybe you all can get a guest appearance too, like playing actual Romans and, uh, yeah. Barbarians or something like that. You know, kind that would like, be so cool. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's coming. It's coming. It's only a matter. It's only a matter of time. Yes. Um, I'd be all about it. So, I mean, now we're, we're in a little bit for, so for those who have been watching the show or listening to the show for a while, um, we don't have a full lineup of, of tastings. Like I was telling Dave before he lives in a, in a challenging state to get product to in Michigan. Um, it, it, you don't have to do anything, but Google shipping alcohol to Michigan, even if it's from a, a licensed retailer to find out that, that is not a friendly state for shipping alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, funny because we're friendly with so many things. I don't know why we're not friendly with booze. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, that's something if you, if you live in the state of Michigan, you know, write your state representative yes. on that one. But uh, so we changed things up a little bit. 
I actually, uh, what we are going to be sipping today, journeyman <laughs> corsets, uh, whips and whiskey, which won best in show and my spirits competition, uh, the ascots. So big win, big, big win for them. Yes. And, uh, I'm pumped on this. This is, this is the, this is the best whiskey I've tasted all year. And I'm so excited for you to taste that with me. Okay. Uh, but first, you know, you gotta, you've got to don a blindfold. Okay. And, and you're going to have to ready for this. You're going to have to smell some random stuff. And this is, this is a little, uh, because we, I, I knew that we were going to have like a little bit of a short on, on the, on the stuff we were tasting. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do was, uh, incorporate some of my live and in-person programming, which includes a blindfold and putting pe- things under people's noses. I have an entire event series that I, that I do across the country called blind bourbon, and I'll bring people on stage and people in the audience will put a blindfold on and smell things that they normally would be able to smell. But if you take the eyesight away, it is, it's much more difficult uh, wow. to, All to right. smell it. Uh, and because I have learned that you are a cook, you're a cu- you're into the culinary world. Yes. Um, it is, I think that you probably got a better chance than most to, uh, to smell what your wife is going to put under your nose here. I'm going to do my best. I actually have a, I feel like I have a really bad sense of smell. I can taste out. I could taste pretty well, but I don't know. Like there's certain things that she can smell. She's like, you don't smell that. Like, no, not at all. What do you smell? <laughs> but maybe she's just like supernatural or something. I have no maybe idea. She's, maybe she's a super smeller, you know, she needs to get into like tasting whiskeys and wines and stuff. I swear with her nose, she could smell it. I don't know. <laughs> Let's train her. It's time, right? Is she, is she around with some stuff? Honey, you ready? Yeah. All right, blindfold All right, on. She's ready. Okay, blindfold is on. Blindfold is now, on. Now, will she be able to hear me, or is she? Uh, she cannot hear you, but I'll tell her what you're saying. You'll, you'll I translate. Got the headphones in. All right, tell her to come on over and uh, put the object about two inches underneath your nose. Put the object like two inches underneath my nose. The the seasoning or the fruit. The seasoning we can or the start- fruit. We can start with the uh, with the fruit. We'll start with the, the fruit. fruit. All right. Do I show it to the camera? Does it matter? Yeah. Yeah. yeah show yeah, it to the camera. Show it. <laughs> oh, very nice. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. He, she's putting it right in there. All right. Go ahead and take it away. What is that? Oh. <laughs> Let's try it again. <laughs> All right. Try it again. What is it? Oh, it smells so familiar. Um, strawberry. Hey, Did I get it. Look at that. Look at that. He's got he's got it down. All right. All right. One, one for one. Now let's I go for... for a second. It almost tasted it, or for a second. It almost smelled like a mango or something. Oh. It was the second time I went in that I was like, oh, that's strawberry. All right. Let's go in for the uh, for the next one. Here Seasons. we go. All right. Just one. Yeah, we'll do one. Just one. Oh, boy. Oh, this is one of my favorite things in the world to smell. Cumin. <laughs> Boom. Winner. <laughs> I know my seasonings. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Look at that. Two for two. Woo! All I right. I love it, Dave. I was nervous about this. Cool. I wasn't nervous about the season. I was more nervous about the fruit. I know my seasonings pretty well. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, you crushed that. And cumin, by the way, my my favorite thing to put cumin on is lamb. I love oh, lamb oh. cumin. So good. That's something I don't I don't cook enough, to be honest. I wish I did more of, but um, yeah, that's delicious with lamb for sure. What do yeah, you like to cook? That, dude, it sounds so basic, but honestly, I just I love messing with different steaks and then doing them. Lately, I've been really obsessing over reverse searing different cuts of steak Mm -hmm. where I do them on my Traeger at a lower temperature, get them to like 120 or so on a, you know, on a smoker with different pellets. So I get some of that smoke flavoring in there and then I take them inside and I put them in a pan with butter and just 
like one minute, one minute, baste it with butter, let it rest. And I've been obsessing over that technique lately. I also like cooking seafood and stuff. Uh, my, my wife's pescatarian. So mm. I nerd out with that. Um, for a while I was really getting into cooking different sauces and trying to accompany everything with sauces. But mm -hmm. lately, since I got my Traeger, I just, um, I've just been obsessing over perfecting the meat, <laughs> whatever I'm cooking. Yeah. So I've, you, I've, you gotta that's get, you gotta thing. get lamb, you gotta get lamb in the rotation now. And I do some, like cumin on there. You're right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do. I got it. That sounds really good. My mouth's like watering. <laughs> I have a, a brisket. I think I'm going to do Sunday. Still haven't quite mastered that style of cooking, you know? And um, I went to cooking school for a minute and then cooked at some steakhouses and a couple country clubs before the band started catching its stride. And barbecue is something I have zero experience with. So it's been fun to play around with smoking different meats and trying different stuff with the trade yeah. and stuff and that's something yeah. that's uh, new totally new to me it's a whole i mean you know the thing about it is is like you can screw it up you can you can you can make it too smoky uh yeah. boy yeah there's there's so many ways you can there's uh, a lot to it i mean it's like if yeah. you compare like i mean it'd be like comparing normal cooking to running and then barbecuing to like ice skating like <laughs> it's a similar thing but it, it's a totally different science absolutely absolutely well, you know, it's the same little simple, you know, uh, barbecuing and, and whiskey making. There's a lot of similarities there, you know, wood being a, a big part of it. Uh, but we're going to we're going to taste something here that's native to your home state. Yes. In Michigan. Um, this is from uh, Journeyman. It's a distiller there in Michigan um, in corset whips and whiskey. Is the brand. This is a single barrel from them. This is a wheat whiskey. I'm going to pour it here and you got a whole bottle, huh? Did you already drink Not, half? Of, did you already drink three quarters of it? No, <laughs> I swear to God. No, he, this is the amount they sent me. Oh, they sent you. They sent you. So I got it in a little sample bottle. All okay. Right. No, okay. they sent me the whole bottle. and um, I, I did not drink the whole thing, though. They just sent me the, the little bit at the bottom here. I've had um their featherbone whiskey before. Oh, the and, rye, yeah, yeah, and um, mm -hmm. really liked it. Yeah, they have these uh, unique names to go with their uh, with their whiskey. Uh, but wheat whiskey, uh, wheat whiskey is a category of whiskey that is not really, not really uh, popular, and it's just kind of. Um, it's kind of just now coming to its own, uh, but it, it's never had a moment. And like, this is the first time in a major competition that a wheat whiskey has won. So this is, this is a big win for them. And so when you, when you smell, when you smell American whiskeys, you want to smell with your mouth open, kind of go side by side, you know, relax that olfactory, just kind of let it all in and then put it on your palate, just kind of, feel it and think about it um and see what kind of what part of the tongue it's hitting just put a little bit on there and uh and then really focus on the flavors all right lots lots going on in the back of my tongue that it's he yeah it's heavy answer <laughs> um Yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm a bourbon hobbyist, but far from an expert. Mm. Do you get coconut, like chocolate coconut in this? Yeah, now that you say that, I very much taste coconut. What's a, what's a note that you're picking up? That's great. I don't know if I've ever tasted coconut in a whiskey before. That's awesome. Um, it 
it's kind of weird. I think a tiny bit of cherry, but would it be like a chocolate covered cherry? Yes. I think that's more. Yeah. I'm tasting. There's some real, there's some real sweetness to this. It's a, there's a sweetness factor to this that is um, uh, quite a bit influenced by like a fruit note, but there's also like some chocolatey here. But what what's resounding to me is like how long it's still on my tongue after I swallow it. It's so riveting and powerful uh, in terms of like the finish. It's the finish is. Um, off the charts it's like still finishing on my palate it's amazing yeah um i think one of the most surprising things to me was um uh like how powerful it felt on the like the the back of my tongue mm -hmm. um and then yeah the as soon as you said coconut it was like overwhelming with that flavor and yeah and it does it does linger for a long time um is it a little spicy to you? The the spice that I get out of this is is muted in comparison to the like uh, the chocolate and coconut note. Um, I get some like nutmeg, but like it's 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 muted in comparison to like it's like third or fourth tier okay. level of flavors. Yeah. <clears throat> It's but definitely is, way more fruit for this sure. Is, it's, it's also 132.5 proof. <laughs> so I was just I mean, looking at it's 66 point set. Yeah. I, was like, I mean, that's it's, it's packing some heat here, you know? Yeah, man. So, so if you, if you were to drink this straight, like you know, the whole bottle there, uh, not that you haven't been drinking the bottle uh, already, uh -huh. <laughs> but um, you know, it, it it would uh, it put you down pretty quick. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, I would have had to be doing some work to finish that much whiskey. <laughs> now, when you when you're singing on uh, when you're on tour on stage, would you drink before you go on uh, to sing, or do you drink while you're singing? Um, no, not while I'm singing, um, and not really before. Um, I like doing one whiskey like neat just sipping while I'm waiting to go on stage. And um, it doesn't do anything for my voice positively or negatively. It mainly just helps me kind of loosen up a little bit for that first song or two before my, you know, adrenaline kicks in and I'm just in the zone. Um, but it just helps me loosen up a little bit, relax before the, the, you know, the track start and we head out there. I do not, drink more than you know maybe two drinks a day if i have a show the next day or something i gotta really take care of myself make sure i'm 100 percent for the next one um and alcohol is not very friendly to singers it's dehydrating and acidic <laughs> but uh my coach is all right with me partaking a little bit you know it's funny like what i i've interviewed a lot of singers and it's like all over the place. It is. Everyone's bodies are so different. You know, yeah. um, I've met guys that can crush a whole bottle of whiskey and go up on stage and have a great show, sing everything note for note, not lose their voice. Um, and then, you know, Kyle, who, who our former singer, he uh, he couldn't even look at alcohol without losing his voice. <laughs> he was wow. so hypersensitive to it. He was completely sober for the entire tour. Um, not a drop of anything. I'm, I'm a little in the middle. Um, if the set's a little shorter, I can have a little more. If the set's longer, I can really only have like one. Um, but it's different for everybody, you know, it's, um, so yeah. Daryl Hall, I, I interviewed Daryl Hall of Hall and Oates and, and, you know, you don't get it more, much more of a classic, you know, blues and pop culture singer than Daryl Hall from the, from the 1980s um 90s and 70s as well of course he's still playing I mean, he still sounds great you know he's still playing today but he's like i love drinking whiskey before i go on you know yeah uh, for sure so, <laughs> and 
Uh, I, who's another one? Another really prominent singer uh, loved to drink while he was while he was playing. Um, uh, Alex Ebert of okay. um, Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros. Oh yeah, nice, nice. You know the 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 home song he loved singing. Like he's got like he's got like a particular range, but like it, it, everybody's just so different. Yes, like that, you know. And you know, the, singing is just such a weird thing. I I've I've struggled my whole career to find a coach, even that I've liked. Not not like that's the wrong word, but a coach that I actually am learning from because it's such a singing is such a mental thing and you're micromanaging right. all these weird parts of your body and you have to be hypersensitive to everything that's going on. And it's really hard to teach somebody that. So I finally found a coach I liked after several tries with other ones. And, you know, I learned from them. Don't get me wrong, but my new coach is awesome. He just explains things to a way for me that work and explains to me a way to be a better singer that clicks in my head. And yeah, I mean, people's dietary habits are no different. It's different for every single singer. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's fascinating, honestly. Well, we are all cut from different cloths and, uh, that's important to remember, but you know, uh, it just in my time in music, uh, which I am not in the music industry, I interview musicians, but I, I have learned that this is one of those, this is one of those questions that people have either they feel like they haven't figured out um or they're like you know what i don't care uh oh oh ed qualcheck ed qualcheck from live oh okay okay he was a big one he's like i love drinking on stage so <laughs> yeah, I, so. Like, I wish i could i've even tried it uh i just um it's more like my stomach like as soon as i drink something with alcohol in it and i start jumping around i feel like i'm gonna get sick um but I'm the same way, like when I play hockey and stuff, like I, I don't, all the guys drink before the games. I can't, I, it just doesn't sit well with me. If I'm going to sit, drink something and then go run around and do something physical. <laughs> Sorry. Well, but anyways, what you're saying. <laughs> no, no, no. My, my whole thing is, is like, you know, it's you're, you're in an art form, you know, you, you are the art, you are the instrument. So, you know, the instrument better um than anybody so i'd say go with what's working for you and if you have the coach now that's crushing for you knock it out but you know you're still young you're still young um you know you're 10 years younger than i am and and so you've got you've got a lot of um you got a lot of tours a lot of records ahead of you and you know you all started you all crushed it very early in your careers but you know, you're going to be in that, you know, pre middle stage with this next album coming out. You know? I appreciate so you, that, man. Yeah. You, you've got a, you've got a long road ahead of you. I mean, in, in a lot of respects, you know, how many artists that are in their mid thirties that haven't even broke yet. But yeah. Yeah. It's very there's, true. There's, there's so many and like the music business, everybody feels like shit all the time. Nobody feels like they've ever accomplished anything. And I it's like to, and I like to tell people like, you know, you you fucking made it, man. You you have gotten where you are by trusting your instincts. So, you know, don't beat yourself up too much about it. No, man. It, so you said a couple of things that triggered thoughts for me um, on all this. Number one being I, I get so bummed out sometimes I. I watch a lot of hockey. I watch a lot of football. I play hockey and athletically I'm past my prime. I'm not as good of a hockey player as I was when I was playing high school and stuff. Sure. But something interesting I learned is that as a singer, I am in my prime and I've just barely gotten into my prime. Um, singers don't start fizzling out to like mid fifties. So I got plenty of time to, keep going. That makes me feel good. I'm like, I'm in my prime as a singer. Cool. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, with the band, um, I feel like in my twenties, I really took a lot for granted and I didn't realize that 
some of the memories I made with the band during that time. And also when we were just starting are some of my favorite memories to date. And I didn't realize it because I was too excited about the next thing. And I always wanted a little bit more and I always wasn't fully content with where I was. I think sometimes it's a good thing because it always pushed me to do better and want more and want to make a better record, want to perform better on stage. But it also, um, I don't know, held me back from fully enjoying things that I should have been fully enjoying. And now where I'm at now and after Kyle passing and all the things we've been through, it's become really important to me to stop and enjoy things and realize how awesome it is that we're still doing this and how awesome the show is. And yes, it's annoying. We had to jump on a plane that got delayed and we almost missed the connecting flight and they lost our bags, blah, 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 but soak it in and enjoy it. Have fun with your friends and remember why you're doing it, you know, and I've been trying to be a lot better about that lately. I mean, in a lot of respects, it is work, but also I got to imagine that your bandmates have become family, you know, in some ways. Absolutely. Uh, you know, even Andy. Um, oh, Andy was best man at my wedding. <laughs> That's why I got to make fun of him so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, it's like, you know, you're going you're going through something. Um, and you're going through phases and like, if you look at the most successful band in your genre, which is Metallica, look at all the shit they went through, you know? Yeah, man. Let me look at all the shit Metallica went through and look at, look where they are now. Yeah. I mean, and you nailed it, man. I mean, people are so negative in the music industry. Everyone always wants a little more. No one's content. Um, and everyone's in an odd way competing with each other. There's plenty of people out there. People can listen to more than one band, but there's just this, there's a, a weird thing about it sometimes. And, um, it's interesting that you've picked up on it too. It, well, all you have to do is look in social media threads, you know, <laughs> in social yeah. media threads, it's, it's like, you know, everybody sucks and there's like a couple <laughs> super fans and, and it's like, what the fuck, man? Why? This is a great song. You know, it, it just, dude, oh, I had to stop looking, to be honest. Like, I just, I, uh, I can't read it. I can't go in the comment section for our music. I, I just wait till we do it live. And, you know, I, I can always tell live right away how a song's doing with yeah. our fan base. Um, more so than the comments. It's funny. My wife, though, she'll go in there and she'll like scoop and she's like, She's like, you should really go read the comments. They're really good. I'm like, nope, not going. <laughs> Will not. She's like, everyone loves the new song. I'm like, I don't care. Not reading. <laughs> it's it's hard. Like you, you know, in one one of the things about the the world of music is there's so many people who set things up, who put you forward, uh, who are selling things for you and doing all of this, but it's you right there on the stage front and center in the studio you all are the ones um creating the art you know and i think that's the 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 burden has never ended from being on the artist's shoulders it, it the it was like that in the 60s it was like that in the 70s I mean, I, I actually have a theory that there's a lot of a lot of a lot of the people we have lost in music are because they have been coping with the fame. Nobody prepares you for the fame. Nobody prepares you for the hate. And that's very true, man. It's very true. It's it's a hard business to be to be in those circles. And I, I look at what you all are doing. And, you know, I mean, it's been five years since you put out a record you lost someone you loved you lost the you lost kyle you lost you know someone very close to everybody in the band and you guys are still here and i don't think i mean i don't, I don't know you other than this this call here today the zoom call today but i would just tell you is just kind of getting to know your music and you know, actually being a fan of yours for a while and sipping some whiskey with you and just saying like, don't let, don't let this moment, you know, 
get past you enjoy it and understand what you have done because this is fucking hard you know Dude, what I'm saying? I, I, I appreciate that so much man yeah i think i think there is like a misconception with all that that people think uh hey we're musicians we got it made it's easy yeah. life's easy and it's it's honestly one of the hardest things i've ever done is be in this band and and record music and make music and go and play it and it's heartbreaking sometimes you'll work on something for a year you know uh, you work on a song or recording it and releasing it or a record you know it'll you'll spend a year of your life creating this thing and then you'll send it to your team and they could be like this sucks go do it again or you'll release it and you know some dude li listens to it once um on his phone without his headphones in or anything and it's like this sucks and you know <laughs> never listens to it again. It can be heart absolutely heartbreaking, but um, I'm addicted to when things work out, when you do release that song that people are attached to. And, you know, when you play it live, they're screaming it right back at you. I'm, I'm so hooked that I'm willing to go through all the pain and suffering to get to that point, man. <laughs> well, you guys are right there and you're about to go on tour again. You got you got a new album dropping, and you know the world is your oyster, Dave. So thank you, man. Yeah, exciting stuff going on for sure. So tell us, tell us about uh, the tour coming up. Like, where are you going to be heading? You know, how can people find out about it? Oh, we have some crazy stuff coming up. Um, I leave for two weeks. We're flying into Stockholm, Sweden, to play a show, and. Um, you know, we haven't got to tour much in the last few years. So we all decided why not stay an extra week? So we just booked a huge block of rooms at the Hilton right there in Stockholm. And we're all just going to hang out. We're bringing our wives, our girlfriends, uh, a couple friends, and we're just going to take over the city after the show, have a good time. But anyways, after that, we uh, go out on the August Burns Red Tour. We're direct support for them. Um hitting a lot of B markets and stuff on that run, a uh, little smaller cities, which would be awesome because we haven't hit B markets in forever. And then I come home for a week and then we head straight out um, as direct support for architects. And I'm so pumped, man, because August Burns Red has been one of my favorite bands since I started the band and architects has been one of my favorite bands since probably a few years after that. And so I'm just going to be watching both those bands every night and trying to make some new fans and um play some new songs dude it's that's gonna be awesome. awesome yeah that's awesome i'll tell you too like this podcast is actually very popular in sweden it's oh yeah like, all right Sweet. so hopefully someone listens to this and like uh doesn't quite stalk you but you know r randomly runs into checks it you out and, uh, you know come sees your show or you know, runs into you for coffee or something. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. We're playing, we're playing a uh, July 2nd. It's called um, high five summer fest. And oh, nice. there's a bunch of other European bands on it. And I'm, I'm pumped. I love Sweden and, you know, doing the whole Europe tour is fun and stuff, but flying in for this one show makes an awesome opportunity to just hang around and enjoy. Usually when we tour Europe, I'm in a new country every day. You know, every time I've been to Sweden, I've been there for 24 hours. Now I get to spend a whole week there and just explore and go nuts. I mean, that's nice. That's a dream come true. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think the uh, the Romans went through there once or twice. So, you know, well, we're going to make it a third or fourth time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, man, it's great having you on, Dave. I appreciate your time and, and opening up and being so candid and, and sharing a great dram of uh, whiskey with me. What'd you think of the uh, of the journeyman? What do you think? So good. Um, like I said, I mean, I, it did blow my mind. <laughs> he promised me it would. And I was really pumped on it. And it's it's despite it being such a high ABV, it's it's surprisingly smooth and i it's it doesn't just burn i can actually taste a lot of flavors and all the fruits and really enjoy it i'm glad i have a little uh left over so <laughs> right on well i'm still going I'm, i will take your word for it that you didn't drink it in advance but uh that's not all 
That's not always the case for this show, but please thank your wife too for putting uh putting things under your nose while you had a blindfold on. Yeah, uh, I will. Fred, thank you so much for having me, man. It's been a pleasure. I was really excited to be a part of this. And absolutely, I look forward fun. to hanging out with you next time in person. Absolutely. So. Cool. All right, man. Well, hey, cheers, cheers, and cheers, uh, dude. I look forward to the to the next time and. Good luck on the tour and, and everything in between. Hey, you got my email, man. Anytime you want tickets or whatever, just let me know. You got it, got brother. You. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Cheers. And Cheers, remember, dude. vodka sucks. Vodka sucks.